Your book is The Ambulance Drivers. Who were they? John Dos Passos, who's little remembered today, and Ernest Hemingway, who's certainly well remembered. It was a story of two of the more significant writers of the 20th century. People have forgotten that a lot about World War I. When World War I broke out in 1914, it was many years before the United States entered the war. But for young Americans, particularly politically active Americans, they felt the war was gonna be the defining moment of their generation. Never before had such a mechanical uh, war machine taken place, slaughtering thousands upon thousands of people. And so it was a defining moment for their generation as for mine may be the Vietnam War would have been the equivalent. And they felt a need to get there and see it and be part of it. And since the United States was not part of the war, a voluntary ambulance corps was developed. And people like John Dos Passos and Ernest Hemingway ended up being on the front lines of the war uh, through that means. Can you give us just a picture of of what that would have been like? It depended a lot on, on the person themselves in the sense that Dos Passos was anti-war and so he saw it as a, a horrible scene. Hemingway uh, had this sense of wanting to test himself, to, to endanger himself. So for him, it was an exciting experience as opposed to a depressing experience. But both of them saw carnage, both of them saw the gruesomeness of the war up front and it changed them. It not only just changed them, it changed American literature. The war so, was such a fracturing event in history that people felt needs of expression had to change, that the old way of writing was no longer suited. So both Hemingway and Dos Passos, after the war, along with others, tried to rewrite how we write, um, uh, how, to, how to find a means to express things that represented the new modern world that had emerged. Um, and that's part of the reason why Hemingway became such a success, such an uh, important writer to us, is that what he did was a, a revolutionary act. Looking back now, it doesn't seem so, but that's often the case. I mean, we look at a Cubist painting today entirely differently than we do when the first time a Cubist painting was hung in a museum. How did the literature change them? You mentioned that. How did it change them? Well, it changed them in a couple of ways. Dos Passos and Hemingway had, a, had what one today might call, and I don't call it in the book, a bromance, in the sense that it was an intensely emotional relationship, very close with each other. And at the center of it was their writing. They each read each other's works before they were published. They each commented on that, and they each waited for each other's reaction. And so their fight over literature ended up being a fight that affected their friendship and in the end brought an end, uh, brought an end to their friendship um, because they saw such rad radically different purposes for their writing. Um, I mean, to simplify things, Hemingway was more of a pure artist and Dos Passos was more of a artist who wanted to use the power of art to make a change in the world. So this experience of the war profoundly changed both of their lives and changed, especially for Hemingway, the way that he wrote, sort of concentrated his bold, direct mm -hmm. style. Um, how did that impact the other American writers? Well, in a sense, with Hemingway, this before Hemingway and after Hemingway, um, anyone who did not go along with the changes of style that he so, succeed, so successfully uh, engineered in writing was often considered stodgy, old fashioned, out of date. Um, and a whole generation mimicked him and, and sought to write like he did. It, it's part of, the, part of the aspect of doing something revolutionary in art is when it first occurs, people rebel against it, think it's wrong and don't know how to take it. But once it's accepted, we forget how revolutionary it was. So when somebody picks up a Hemingway book today and reads the short staccato sentences, that conciseness, that directness you're talking about, they're so used to it that they don't recognize what a moment of breakthrough it was when it occurred. And that's exactly the point. Um, what was revolutionary back then is commonplace today.